Church, we are so excited that you've made a decision to join us. It's hard to believe that we are already into the month of February, but January's gone and February is here full of its possibilities. So I'm excited that you decided to stop by here today. I would ask, as you know, this is the first Sunday. Why don't you get a cracker or piece of bread and some juice as we will be taking communion at the end of the service. And we certainly would love for you to participate and join with us. It's been snowing out there, so we are living in a winter wonderland, but God's work is still going forth in the midst. The numbers here in Ohio have started to come down, and that is exciting news. So we're hoping that you will continue to socially distance yourself, wear your mask. Those of you who are eligible to get your vaccine, won't you prayerfully make 
consider that, and I hope make the decision to get your vaccine. Uh, we can make a difference in the middle of this pandemic. If it's your first time visiting us, please know that the church office is located at 230 East High Street here in Springfield, Ohio. The office is open Monday through Thursday. We would love to hear from you. You can correspond via um, snail mail, email, on our website or on our Facebook page, but we would love to have the opportunity to get to know you. Perhaps you have a prayer concern or you have a praise report of how God is moving in your life. We would love to share and join with you in celebration and join with you in prayer if that would be the case. So welcome, welcome welcome to High Street. We are just excited. Won't you join me right now as we go to the Lord in prayer? Let us bow our heads. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we do thank you for this day. We are excited about the work you've called us to. God, let us not get weary in well-doing. Strengthen us, empower us for the mission that you've called for us. Someone out there, God, needs to hear from you. Someone needs a touch from you. God, we know that you are everywhere at the same time. So move supernaturally naturally through the airwaves, through the internet waves, God, and touch and re reach out to those who desperately are seeking you. God, we thank you for what you're doing here at a place called High Street. We love you, and it's in the name of your son Jesus that we say, amen. Well, thank you guys. Sit back get comfortable, and we're going to proceed with this morning's service. Well, good morning, High Street. I got several announcements for you this morning. Uh, we are having, or are hosting, the carry-out dinner as a huge thank you to all of our congregants, and that is this Wednesday uh, at 11 to 12.30. Come on over, grab a meal, it's on us, and uh, if you can't make it, let us know, email or, or call the office and we'll deliver it to you. So uh, that's this week, February 10th on Wednesday. RSVP as soon as possible. Thank you. If you're looking for a Bible study, there's an ongoing one uh, through Zoom right now. There's two opportunities. One is on Tuesdays at 1130 a.m. and The other one is on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Both are going through the book of Hosea, uh, so pick a time that works best for you. And email the office if you'd like to join. And there are several other things that we could cover today, um, including there's Big Brothers, Big Sisters opportunities, the Helping Hands Free Store, um, Zoom Sunday School, the Community Kitchen's here on Tuesday nights now. And wow, you know, we're, we're not getting together in person, but uh, reading through our weekly email, we are a busy, busy congregation. So thank you all. If you need opportunities, if you want to know more about our opportunities, of course, give us a call, check out the emails. There's a lot of information in those as well. So thank you all and enjoy the service.
Today's scripture lesson comes to us from Mark 1, verses 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went out throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. On our prayer list this week, it's gone down, thankfully. Because we've had a lot of of, uh, negatives in our congregation here lately. A lot of illnesses, a lot of sicknesses. And this week, uh, not nearly as many bullet points. But I do still have some concerns to share with you today. Well, Barb and Andy uh, Pajtich returned home from the villa on Tuesday night. But uh, unfortunately, they had to be called back by squad uh, to take them to the hospital. And they were there at least overnight. I don't have any other details beyond that. But uh, at least at this point, Andy seemed to be a little bit worse than Barb. So let's, let's pray for the Kapayatiches. They've had a lot of uh, problems. And, and uh, right now going through this, I believe it's COVID symptoms, they really need our prayers. Marion Mossberger uh, is now home from the hospital. And she's going under physical therapy. So good news there. She's home. Ruth Fisher's brother-in-law, Craig, uh, is on a ventilator. He's not eaten in a week, and uh, it's not doing very well. Let's pray for Craig, Ruth's brother-in-law. Brad Hawkins is out of the hospital and currently uh, under care, uh, under Patty's care, his mother. Brad's surgery went well, as I uh, announced last week, so prayers for continued healing. Sharon Bates is at home, but still needs continued prayer for her and her husband, Paul, and their sons. Virginia Hossier's sister, uh, Nellie Jackson, is now home from the hospital, but is still on oxygen and is struggling with uh, her health situation. We continue to pray for Catherine Banfio, Harriet Carter, Bob Roseman, Laura Hoffman, Trudy Bird, Paul and Sharon Bates, Katie Turner, Carolyn Robinson, Damian Dennis, and everyone at Good Shepherd, Sandy and David Lawrence. We pray for our church. We pray for our church family, staff, and our volunteers. And we pray for our country. As you can hear from this week, uh, I said earlier, the list is down, people are going home, but still ongoing prayers are needed for our members as, even as they go home. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you with thanks and praise. Praise that you're, you're with the doctors and with us as we continue to heal, heal our bodies and heal our spirits. We're thankful that our members are going home, but we still pray for them in home as they're on oxygen or as they fight off other diseases. Lord, be with those that are ill, but be with their families as well. For their caretakers that need to take extra time out of their busy schedules to take care of family. We pray for their spirits and and their mental health and their spiritual health as as they take care of others. Lord, help us all to reach out to one another. 
It is a difficult time being separated from one another, to not be able to reach out and, and touch one another, but be, be there virtually for, for one another. Help us and give us reminders to reach out to our family and our friends, either through a phone call or a video chat, to let them know that we care. Because we know that means the world to, to, our, to, to us spiritually as individuals. Lord, we give thanks and praise for all these things, and we pray through this cold weather that those that are stuck out in it have a place to stay. And we pray that even as we travel, that we can stay safe. Lord, we pray all these things in your name as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this point in the service, the ushers would be coming forth and passing out the offering plate, but we know it's a virtual setup here. So I just want to thank all of you who have continued to be faithful to your pledges, those of you who have sent in your tithes and offerings, and just to make sure you're aware, we have several different opportunities that you may give. You can mail it into the church address 230 East High Street, Springfield, Ohio 45505. You can use Cash App. We have a Cash App account. You can go to our website and make your, uh, send your offering in there. So um, please know that we appreciate all that you have done and your sacrificial offerings. We want you to know that it is our prayer, our heartfelt concern, that we are good stewards to all the resources that God sends our way. Uh, we know that it is more than just for brick and mortar, but it's that men, women, boys, and girls might enter into a loving and lasting relationship with our Savior. So right now, we're just going to have a quick prayer to thank God for all that you are doing, all the resources that are coming our way. Won't you join me? Dear God, we thank you for these offerings. We thank you for the sacrifices that your people have made that they might honor a commitment to you. God, we understand that it is not just about brick and mortar, but it is about relationships. It is about taking the gospel to those who are unaware. It's about helping someone put food on their table. It is about helping that person who might not have a roof over their head. So God, right now, we lift up these offerings to you, that you might bless them, that you might sanctify them, that you might increase them as you see fit. God, we love you, and it's in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, that we say thank you and amen. say 
there is a bar in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bar in Gilead to heal the sin. High Street, you caught us here having some laughs and fun behind the scene. Maybe one day we'll have a bloopers. Um, no, we won't. We won't have a bloopers. But it is exciting to be in ministry and to work with the team that I have as each person brings their own unique gift and, and their own personality. And God just put us all together so it is a good thing, so I'm happy to be here, and I hope that the product we present to you continues to be a blessing, not only to you, but to your family and those persons around you. This week, we are in the New Testament, the book of Mark, chapter 1, and what we know about uh, the book of Mark is that it opens up with action. Um, Mark presents this Jesus um, going about his business, so it's almost as if you want to buckle up your seatbelt and get ready for what this Jesus is about to do. So we know as Jesus begins his ministry in Galilee, he has called his disciples. Now, it was just in the Capernaum Capernaum synagogue that he healed the man with an unclean spirit by rebuking the spirit and calling it out of him. And the town folk were so amazed about this new teacher and exorcist that um, they, rumors and conversations just spread throughout the town. But meanwhile, after the healing in the synagogue, Jesus returns to Simon Peter's house. There lies Simon Peter's mother-in-law in the grip of a fever. Now we have to remember the time that we're talking about and this is no small matter in the ancient world. A fever was not only debilitating for a short while but it was often a symptom of a condition that could lead to death. We know nothing from Mark about this fever, its intensity, its duration, or its cause, but we do know that a valued family member was unable to be up and about her work. Her calling, church, her calling had been taken from her by an illness. This is the first woman to appear in the Gospel of Mark, and she becomes the second person that Jesus heals as he begins his ministry in Galilee. She is identified by the name of her male kinsman, which is a proper and acceptable social convention of that time. Women of honorable families were often encouraged or sometimes required to remain in the private realm of the house to protect or rest restrict their potential contact with males outside of the family unit or females of ill repute. Because interestingly enough, this would not only only tarnish or diminish the female's reputation, but this is the time period, this could taint or be a reflection on the reputation of the male whose household she belonged a part of. So just want to make sure you got that. So it wasn't so much as to protect her reputation, although that was there, but it was all about the male that she was connected to. Hey, folks, I didn't write it. I'm just preaching it. Amen. Hold on. 
So initially, the interaction proceeds as the custom and the mores prescribe. And when I say interaction, it's when Jesus enters this house. But one thing we can count on with Jesus, with Jesus, events can suddenly go left quickly and without notice. And this was no exception. Jesus was a male outsider to the family. He goes into this sick woman, touches her, and the fever flees from her. The text tells us he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, then the fever left her. Now, please don't let the importance of this brief action go by you. Jesus, a male outsider to the family, goes into where the sick woman is and touches her. That brings me to my first point. Jesus was not bound by the rules of the day. His ministry church was to touch those who were considered the untouchable. His ministry, his demand was to go to the margins and, and touch those who were on the fringes of society. Jesus broke the conventional rules and wisdom of the day by going to where this woman was and by touching her. Jesus' ministry was to touch those who were considered untouchable. Jesus simply raises her up as Mark directly and uncomplicatedly tells us. He says, the fever left her and she served them. Now, these verbs are interesting that are used in this passage. Simon's Pe Simon Peter's mother-in-law is raised up by Jesus. Now, that word takes on a powerful meaning in Mark's gospel and in su uh, subsequent Christian communities. It is a word that has been used by Jesus himself. Mark uses the word egero, E-G-E-I-R-O, in many healings. But the words suggest that a new strength, something different, not common, not ordinary, but a new strength is imparted to those who were laid low by illnesses, by unclean spirits, or even death, so that they could rise up and take their place in the world again. Church, this is my second point. Jesus imparted Igero, a new strength, into person. And the beauty of that is, is just as Jesus did it to Simon Peter's mother-in-law, he desires that each and every one of us, that those of us who are in need, that those who are on the margins, that those who, who fall out, outside of conventional churches and houses of worship, he desires to impart a garro to them, a new strength, that they might not only rise up, but that their calling might continue, that they might be in community once again. This new strength, church, is necessary for restoring a person to a greater wholeness than even what they had before. That's where this next verb comes into play. Simon Peter's mother-in-law served immediately after she has been raised. Now the verb that's used to convey that message, serve, diakoneo, D-I-A-K-O-N-E-O, -E the same verb that you, Jesus uses to describe the essence of his own ministry. So sometimes, church, sometimes we kind of get this thing twisted and, and perhaps it might raise some of the hairs on our, the 
back of our neck when it says that Simon Peter, this unnamed mother-in-law, when she was raised up by Jesus, that she began to serve. She began to serve and minister to Jesus and the disciples. But I'm here to tell you that there's nothing shameful. There's nothing that marked her as a third-class citizen when it says that the verb used to describe what she did is the very same verb used to describe the ministry of Jesus, that it is to serve rather than to be served that characterizes this Christ that we serve. And this woman, Mark, uses that same verb to say that once she was raised up, she began to serve and minister to those who were in the room. She's far, Simon Peter's mother-in-law is far from a, a, an example of a pathetic, unliberated woman. So we've got to be careful not to apply some modern day understanding to something that the Bible is trying to convey to us. That's why I often stress that the importance of a study Bible so that you can dig deeper and look at what just what the words and what the authors are trying to convey. Now, as a little sidebar, it will be the women who are described as having served Jesus as well. Not at all is that verb applied to any of the male disciples, church. I'm just saying what I'm saying. So women, we need to understand that we serve Jesus in the same way that Jesus went forth with his ministry. He came to serve and not to be served. We don't find this description of the male disciples listed in the Bible. Well, needless to say, church, this second healing got around. You know, the grapevine is mighty, and it got around among all the people, so much so that all kinds of folks were brought to Jesus for help. The, they, the sick from Capernaum were laid before the door and he healed their illnesses and he cast out their demons over and over again. But please notice, church, that these two activities were not identical. The ancients did not believe that all illnesses were demonically caused. They knew as well as we do that people get sick and that that illness bears a heavy social cost, not only to the person that they are unable to earn a living or contribute to the well-being of their household, but their, to their ability to take their proper role in the community, to be honored as a valuable member of a household, a town, or a village. That would be taken away from them due to illness. So Peter's mother-in-law is an excellent case to this point. It was her calling and her honor to show hospitality to guests in her home. Cut off from that role by an illness, cut her off from doing that which was what she was integrated into her world. Who was she when she could no longer engage in her calling? Think about yourself. If the rug were pulled un out from under you and you no longer had that one giftedness, that one calling that you exhibit in the world today, who might you be without that? Jesus, church, Jesus restored her to her social world and brought her back to life by, by freeing her of that fever. My third point this morning is that Jesus was well aware that healing is about restoration to community and restoration to calling. So it was not just that her life was spared, but it was that her life was spared that she might continue on and be in relationship with community and bring her gifts and her calling to that group. 
So it's very important that we understand and know that healing is about restoration to community, a restoration of a calling, a role as well as a restoration to life. For just imagine, for life without community, life without calling is bleak indeed. We only have to think about, in Pittsburgh, we have a lot of bridges and the homeless and those who are down and out. As you're driving through and around the city, you can see their camps, if you will. You can see them huddled up under bridges. Sometimes they may have a tent or, or some other a cardboard box. But that sounds to me life without community and life without a calling. Jesus' ministry, and I dare say the ministry he's called us to, involves restoration of those cut off from community to a full role in the community. That's why it's not just about um, uh, just about giving a person a handout, but how can we empower them to do better, to be better? What systems and, and, and what opportunities can we put in place to help bring about that full restoration that's needed to take place? Those of us who've been seriously ill in our own time, hopefully we'll understand the joy of simply being back as a participant in the ordinary process of community life. Truly, church, there's nothing ordinary about life in community. Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, wants to bring about participation, wants to bring about restoration in the fullness of the word. It is God's will for creation to be serving in community with others. So when we go about when we enter to the margins, when we enter to the room where Simon Peter lay, we must remember Jesus wants us to touch those who were considered untouchable. Jesus wants us to impart egero or a new strength to those persons. And lastly, Jesus knows, and we should too, that healing is about restoration to community and a restoration of a calling. Church, that is the word of God for the people of God. As we prepare our hearts and our minds, for communion today. If you've not gotten your elements, please do so at this time so that you may join and come to the table as we go. Our invitation, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us 
for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory be to God. Amen. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. was with his disciples that he took the bread broke it and said take this and eat it is my body which is broken for many and likewise after the meal he lifted the cup and after giving thanks said take and drink this it is the, for the remission of sins. The body of Christ, which was shed, broken for you, take and eat.
Thank you.